Hi guys, welcome to CA Inter Financial Management MCQs. I'm CA Anujalota. We are covering every possible question from the modules of MCQs. I'm trying to explain proper logic, why a certain thing is correct, why the others are not correct. Okay. Let's start it off. This chapter uh, is all about what should be the right, mi right mix of debt, equity, preference, etc. It teaches you what should be the optimum capital structure. This in real life might be of great use in trying to be deciding like, you know, how much debt you all should have, how much equity you all should have, up and so on. Also connected to chapters like capital budgeting, also connected to chapters like ratios. Okay, so let's do the question. Just before I start. All our lectures for CA Inter Costing are coming on our YouTube channel. Every Saturday, Sunday, first these lectures are coming in English Hindi mode. Then all these lectures will be coming in complete English. Okay, let's start it off. Which of the following is irrelevant for optimum capital structure? Okay, optimal means perfect, ideal capital structure. Okay, give me the four options, please. Flexibility. Okay, second one, solvency. Third, uh, liquidity. Fourth, Control. Now, let me say, like, you know, what do you mean by all those things? <clears throat> See, flexibility. Do you have an option to repay the capital that you all have taken? Example, suppose if you issue equity shares. Now, suppose you required money, you issue equity shares. Okay. And suddenly one day you think, I don't need the money anymore because internal profits are very high. So can you repay them back? Absolutely not. Yes, there could be a buyback. Okay, but buyback is a long driven process. Okay, so flexibility means ability to repay the capital whenever you want. Okay, now, <clears throat> obviously, that is supposed to be one factor that is very important. Okay, very, very, very important. Solvency means like, you know, that the company has a danger of becoming bankrupt. To be very honest, solvency is something that we all don't think much. Okay, but I'll come back to it further. Liquidity. Liquidity means like you know that you should try to have a capital structure which takes care of your liquidity example if suppose your sales are less that usually happens in the first two or three years of your business if you take more amount of debt try to be thinking you'll have to repay debt each and every year with interest okay so debt might become a problem in that case right okay so that is a factor control do remember that all the greatest companies, okay, ensure that the company is there in the hands of very few people. It is not very widespread because then it becomes very difficult to control. It becomes very difficult to put your decisions also because there are so many people who are trying to be deciding. Try to be thinking like this. If suppose you run a partnership firm, you have two partners or you have say 20 partners, where control will be more? Two partners. Only two people have to agree to implement something, okay. So, which of the following is irrelevant for optimum capital structure? In case you have guessed the answer, put that in the comments below. In case you all have not, then few explanations that you all should know. These are the factors, okay, that should be considered. First, financial leverage or trading on equity. Do remember, if your business is going to be doing good, your sales will be good, your customers are happy with your products, your business is stable, then we always prefer that, that there is more amount of debt because debt brings risk. But risk will pay off if your, if your business is doing good. That will have a stronger impact on your EPS. Okay. So that is one of the factors that every company thinks like, you know, that uh, what should be the amount of financial leverage? What should be the ideal mix of debt and equity? So do remember that if you are in a position to run a good amount of business, no, then in that case, financial leverage is good. Okay. Second, growth and stability of sales, growth and stability of sales. What does this particular thing mean? Growth and stability of sales will mean like, you know, that if suppose your sales are doing good, okay, there's a certain pattern of growth in sales. So inflows will also be coming from your sales. You will be able to uh, pay off debt each and every year. And do remember, please, debt is cheaper than equity. See any question in your capital, uh, in your cost of capital, you'll uh, realize KD is always cheaper than KE, you know. So if there'll be stability of sales, companies prefer that they raise more amount of debt as compared to equity because they will be able to enjoy benefits of trading on equity. Again, point number one. 
Then point number three, cost principle. Again, cost principle is one of the factors that we all consider. As I told, debt is cheaper than equity, but then it has higher risk also. So therefore, you'll have to try to manage. That is one of the principles that we all always think before raising the money. Because we don't want our cost to be very high. So if you don't want your cost to be a very high, try to raise debt. So debt has one advantage, cost is less, but then there is one disadvantage that risk is also very high. Further, risk principle, debt always has highest risk followed by preference shares and followed by equity. Why debt has the highest risk? Because whether you have profits or not, you will have to be paying interest no every year. Okay. And plus you'll have to be redeeming the capital also whenever the time period of debt will end. So therefore that is a principle to be considered. Five, control principle. That is definitely one thing that we also try to be talking of. Companies who want higher control, okay, tend to be having lesser number of equity shares. They tend to raise lesser capital by equity because else the EPS will get diluted. Okay, their control will also be going away from the company. Okay, so five is also correct principle. Point number six, flexibility. Flexibility, many companies, they always think like, you know, that we should not issue equity shares because we should have the flexibility to repay. Example, a company can take loan from a bank in case it thinks after three years okay we don't want that loan it can repay that loan okay the prepayment is always allowed that is flexible capital but in case of equity shares you might not have that option okay you might not have that flexibility so therefore that is a principle to be considered whenever you're raising funds okay so which of the following is irrelevant let me tell you which all are relevant flexibility is relevant liquidity is relevant control is relevant Solvency is not much relevant. See, a bankrupt company in any case is not going to be raising funds at all. Yaar. So usually that is not a funda to be considered. It can become a small factor, but ultimately, see, I have to give you all an answer here. So out of four things, if like, you know, I have to try to separate it out, which one of them is like, you know, not much relevant, then answer should be solvency over here. Okay, that should be the correct answer. Yeah, that is the correct answer. That's it from my side. Uh, I'm all done for today. Watch these lectures. They help you all to be making your concepts proper. And to be very honest, it gives you a certain kind of a direction. Like, you know, how to be thinking about a certain question. I'll see you all next time with another question. Till then, take care. Bye.